Hey there, it's your Wisconsin Wine Guy back with another wine review. And as you can see from the label, you already know what the wine is, you know, but it's going to be a very interesting review. In fact, I'm going to try to make it a quick story, you know, about my connection with this wine. So the wine is uh, Highlands 41, all right, coming out of Paso Robles, uh, California. You know, black granite, they call it. It's, it's a blend. And we'll get to the details uh, shortly thereafter. But here's my short, quick story. You know, when I was living in California, I had the opportunity of buying some land in Paso Robles. You know, uh, this was like, I'm not going to age myself, but it was way back when. You know, uh, acres were like uh, 1,500 to 2,000 an acre. You know, but uh, I admit it, growing up in the city, I was afraid to go out to Paso Robles and be out there in the country, you know, and many, 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 many years later when I owned the wine shop and I was uh, uh, showcasing wines at Paso Robles, you know, and, and the reps and the wine people would come out and uh, we would talk about that. I would tell them that story about, you know, me being too scared or too afraid of going out living in the country when there was just a few vineyards out there. Um, they said, well, you probably should have. And this was probably in 2006 when he told me this, I believe. Uh, uh, you probably should have purchased because now the land is uh, 150000 an acre. Oh, <laughs> ten times its value, right? You know, uh, so there you have it. You know, ten times, hundred times its value, you know. So uh, there you have it. You know what? When you have opportunities in life, take them. I could have bought the land and just not live there, right? Right. Okay. So there you have it. There's my story about Paso Robles. You know, uh, I still appreciate Paso Robles and the job, the job that they do when it comes to wine. So now let's get to why we're here. We're here because these are wines that you can find on the shelves of your liquor stores, grocery stores, and some wine shop shelves. These are wines that I select to do a wine review for you, give you my opinion, what I think of the wines. You know, when you're perusing the wine, I was in your favorite store trying to decide on what wine to buy. Always go to Wisconsin Wine Guy and say, hey, I wonder if Wisconsin Wine Guy reviewed this wine. There you go. There you have it. Very, very simple system. Thumbs up. You know, it means I recommend that wine. Give it a try. You can't go wrong with it. Three quarters. You know what? I would drink it. Okay. Uh, sometimes it may be like, I got, I got Google over it. Sometimes it may be like, you know, hey, you know, I would drink it at a party, but I won't, you know, like go all in and buy bottles. And I would tell you that too. It's like, oh my God, three quarters, but I would still buy bottles. Halfway, you know what? Uh, it's just not working for me. There's something about it that's kind of off, you know? Uh, but that's that. Thumbs down. Need I say anything more about thumbs down? All right. So now, as I said, uh, Highlands 41 out of Paso Robles. This is their red blend. And this is a 2019, the, the great blend is going to be comprised of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Syrah, and an unusual grape in this blend, Tempranillo, a Spanish grape. Wow. So that's going to be very interesting, you know, to taste. Screw cap. All right. Screw cap alert. I should like have this thing going on and say, screw cap, screw cap. Well, I'm talking screw cap, screw cap. You know, but uh, you know how I feel about that. So I'm not going to go into the details on that, but let's give it a pour, give it a taste, let's do what I think. So this business, I wonder if that's starting to fade slowly, but at some point, like, uh, was it 2000, maybe 17 through 20, through 19, okay, 20, I wasn't out in the market that much, but let's say 2000, maybe 2015 through 19, it was this big push on blends, 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 like so all, of a sudden, so all of a sudden people discovered blend, red blends. They've been around forever, red blends, but it's become, it became the thing. I only, I would hear customers all the time when I'm out representing brands. I only do red blends. They've been around forever. You just discovered them. Anyway, so red blends to me, you know, falls in a couple different categories. You know, you have red blends that are just sweet. You have wet red blends, you know, they're just like, they're blended, but it's just like, you know, unbalanced. They have red blends where everything truly comes together in the wine. All right. And I look for those red blends where everything truly comes together in the wine. All right. Oh, wait a minute. Let me check this out here. There was something I was looking for, you know, uh, as far as details go. 
on a on this particular wire here. All right, so we have all right. There we go. Boom. There you go. Got to look it up. You know, sometimes we have paper, so you look it up right away. So I got the great blend again. Repeat those great blends: Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Petit Syrah. Those three grapes were part of that original Bordeaux blend. And then you're going to have Tempranillo, you know, rounding it out. Take a look at that color. Now, that's inky. That's dark. And that, that could be, you know, attributed to the Petit Syrah and, well, you know, Merlot, Cabernet can have density in color, you know, especially if it's very ripe, you know, and, and, and then there's good extraction. But then that Petit Syrah comes in, you know, and just really, boom, throws in that that nice deep color because some Cabernets can have like more instead of a deep purple you know can have a ruby color okay so Merlot we have more of this deep purple but uh, there you go beautiful 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 we all the way through beautiful purple 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 <laughs> all the way through on this one baby that's inky so 15 months uh, this is aged in barrels on the nose ah uh, I mean Come on now, with a combination. I don't know if you ever had Tempranillo before. I love Tempranillo. With a combination of Tempranillo, Petit Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot, the extraction of, of fruit character on the nose is going to be banging, baby. So we got like berries, 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 okay, blueberries. Blackberries, a little plum. <laughs> That's I'll say that for another story when I'm only reviewing Cabernet, my plum story. Don't let me forget. All right. So there you go. Berries galore on this one here. Some spice notes, mm, like all spice coming in this one here. Wow, nice. Now every now and then I pick up a note of mint. So I get a little bit of that too. Herbal. And there's a lot going on here on the nose. I can just go on and on and on. So alcohol on this one here. You know, it'd be nice. I say this all the time. The alcohol is in, in the same spot on every bottle. So alcohol on this one, I'm not going to tell you until I taste it. Okay? That's what I normally do. But I'm, literally, I'm very excited because the nose is, is hitting all the points on the nose. Let's give it a rinse. Okay, notice I'm chewing. That's the tannins. But they're not crazy. I love the chewiness that takes place here in the tannins. Look, gone already. But I'm tasting more for the acidity. You know, my second taste that I'll do will be the taste and also the taste for its balance. But that finish, I mean, as I'm speaking, I can taste the fruit, the berries. Oh my gosh, that, that, that's just so nice, right? I mean, you know, what's the point? You don't want to like, chew a toothpick, right? I know I don't. Let's give it another drink here. <laughs> mm. I like the tannins. I like the finish. Doesn't skip on fruit. I like the acidity. With food, I think that I believe this would be explosive. We're coming in at 14.5% alcohol on this one here. But I wouldn't say I taste 14.5% alcohol. That's the tannins, baby. Not making my mouth stick together. <laughs> wow, one more taste. I know it's summertime, but you know what? I'm digging this. And if I'm chilling, Netflixing, and I'm just by myself, chilling and Netflixing. I would drink this. Okay? It's a thumbs up. A thumbs up for me on Highland 41 at Paso Robles because we got that connection. No, really, the wine. The wine itself stands out. You know, I, I'm digging this. I think you would dig this too. Give it a try to what you think. So it's a thumbs up on the Highland 2019 Paso Robles Highlands 41. 
I'm going to enjoy this the rest of my day. I'm probably going to have a pizza with it. So there's your Wisconsin wine guy saying, as always, let your palate be the guy who's selecting your wine. And I'll see you next time. Ciao!